Hey, uh, is this thing on? Hello? Can you not hear the game audio? It's supposed to be there. Hello? Damn it. Hello, Internet. It's Bandit here, and holy crap was the last week's live letter something. And you know what? I did want to make a live reaction to it, and I did end up wanting to make a video of it the day that it happened. But you know what? I was in shock, and I wanted to process what was going on because a lot of stuff happened, and there's a lot of information. And you know what? There's also a lot of leaks, but shh, we don't really talk about anyways so there are some leaks and there's a lot of other things swirling around and we will know more in a day or so but i do did want to go over the live letter just to give my general thoughts on the things that we do know that are true right now and the live letter was really great i did uh stream the first part of it until the audio issues happened for almost an hour and i decided this is a little bit too much so i ended up basically just quitting and watching the rest of it with my friends um whenever they did finally start showing off things they did one of the first things was this, this beautiful title screen. I'm really excited about this. It's actually really pretty to look at. It was good in motion. I'm ready for this because if it's something I'm going to be able to staring at quite a while. I want it to look good, and that looks really good. Um, so they start off with the general same stuff they always do. New world, new content, you know, release date, new areas, new city, new jobs, new level cap, battle adjustments, like always, new items, new highly, highly challenging raids and dungeons and endgame, blah, blah, blah. But I'm really happy about the near Automata crossover with the 24-man raids, the this Yorha Dark Apocalypse. This is going to be really cool, I think. Um, Yoko Taro is a genius, and I think that they can do something really good with that. We'll just have to see, though. One thing I do want to point out, though, is uh, not, not to mention the world visit, which is amazing, by the way. Breaking down barriers uh, between the servers is, being, is a really good idea, and it's been... Eh, you could argue about that. That's kind of on the fence. But... What I want to point out is this end of 32-bit support the, for o operating systems that only do 32-bit. Um, I heard some people complaining about this, but you know what? Uh, why are you trying to play this game with a 32-bit operating system? And uh, Just saying. Anyways, I mean, maybe... Yeah, I'm not going to judge. But, hey, it does mean good things for the game. Just like getting rid of PS3 support did back in Stormblood. It allowed them to increase the graphics. It allowed them to do certain things that the PS3 was holding this game back from being able to do. And I like that. That's a good possibility there. So I can't really say much to that. You know, I'm just have to deal with it. And I think in the long run it could be a good thing. Just just upgrade with the 64-bit system. It's, it's better anyway. So gameplay adjustments. Fate system. The fates. Mm, I'm so happy about this in a way, but then again, some of it's like, mm, we'll see. Uh, by the way, you're going to hear me say that quite a lot during this entire uh, this entire video. I'm going to say that quite a lot, I feel. Uh, the Fates, back in 2.0, great. You know, two, it used to be able to use them to level. They were a fun experience. It was actually, no, I wouldn't say fun, actually. Never mind, I take that back. But it was a viable way to level, but now... The days you don't really do fates nobody does fates unless you need them for something and maybe having another piece of currency is in our tab is not going to be a good thing but whatever if, if if having extra rewards makes fates better and more fun for me then I'll, I'll do them a little bit more and i mean hey the last time I did see Fates played really fun was there was a lot of Fate action during the last expansion launch, but that's mainly because we were all stuck in the first zone for the entire first day of launch. Yay! Um, yeah. That was the only way to level. 
and we all kept doing a bear fight that was always like right next to the gigantic group of people there was a bear like right across the bridge he'd be like and he'd come over and murder everybody good times good times uh let's just hope that that doesn't happen again this time side quests so these i'm pretty excited about this uh side quests are going to be a little bit more like beast tribes now so they're not going to be useless and i'm not going to feel like i'm wasting my time whenever i have to go and do them there's a lot of side quests that i still haven't done from the last two expansions because i don't know i just was never the proper level when i felt like doing them and it's just not worth doing them unless you're about that level which uh i'm glad that they're fixing this because it'll probably i'll probably end up doing all the side quests they actually probably should go back and do this the old quest too to be honest that'd be nice but they won't. Anyways, roll quest. This one is a little bit worrying, but we'll, we'll I guess we'll have to see with this. Um, they are going to get rid of job quests as a whole to probably cut down on development time, which is probably smart, but instead they're going to have a physical, a magical tank and healer, uh, different paths, and I guess whenever you get to 80, they're going to let you have a specific little short quest for your job, which sounds like a fair trade-off if uh, we're going to keep adding jobs to the game. I understand that making whole quest lines for them is getting more and more and more tedious as the years have gone on. So this is a smart way to kind of help alleviate some of that. So I can't really blame them for it, even though I'm kind of scared with what it's going to be doing to the game. But I guess we'll just have to see. Um, this is beautiful. I'm really excited. I'm finally glad that this uh, city that we saw all those years ago in the trailer that I saw when I saw that trailer all those years ago they got me interested in this game. Uh, it's about freaking time it's in the game. Yeah, finally. They finally did it. They finally did it. It's about time. So, crafting and gathering quests, I don't know very much about those. I really don't. So, uh, I just like to make pots. It's exciting, though. User interface. This is good. This is something they should have done a long time ago. Um... I did like the PvP looking theme, so I might actually use this for a while until uh, they hopefully add another one. Please add another one. I, I just want you to add more themes. Th that'll make me happy. Like old, if, if Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 9 can have different colored themes that you can almost like customize, like 14 can do it too. Please, just, just do it. Just do it, Square Enix, please. Just do it. It does look good in action too. I, I really like the way it looks in action. Ooh, and the user interface. I'm really, really glad with another thing right here. You see this? Cross-world link shells. Eight channels. It's about time. Yes. It's about freaking time. They have done it, boys. We are now going to have plenty. I guess they, it made sense that they needed to test things first while they were just implementing the cross-world system. It makes sense. But... I'm just glad that we finally have it because there was a couple that I would have liked to have joined that I had to turn down because I could only join one. Um, point percentages, tenths, decimals, I, I'm, I'm really happy with this because now when I get a 0.1% wipe, I know exactly what happened. I, I, I know I know that I know exactly how much of a failure I am compared to like, oh, it's 1% and then it just ticks for a second and you really have no idea where it was at. But hey whatever it's fine that's what that's what the uh that other programs for that we don't talk about party list information oh yeah they're getting rid of the party bonuses most people don't even know what that is uh i guess only some of us older players know what that is the party bonuses so nobody's really gonna miss that except for us rest in peace rest in peace party bonuses yeah all right battle system changes this is where i get excited um, they are adding charges on certain abilities. So the dash in, oh yeah, it, you you, you want to do it to get the bonus DPS. You want you want to make sure your DPS is high, right? But then what happens whenever you have like 10 seconds later, you need to close a gap. You just used your gap closer already for DPS, you dummy. But not anymore. Now you can just save them up and it doesn't waste the DPS. You can just catch it up by spending them both back to back. It makes it more likely that we'll be able to use a gap closers as actual gap closers rather than DPS fillers, which is good. I'm really happy with that. Not speaking of this, three charges for this en avant. Beautiful. Dancer's elegant. The most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I can't wait to play one. Um, 
even though I do really want to play Gunbreaker and I was really hoping they would be a little bit more impressive to me, but mm, mm, Dancer's looking pretty good. Anyways, silencing. This is good. I like, t since as a, as a main tank, I definitely like to know that I can silence or stun something. This is amazing. Why the hell didn't this happen sooner? It's about time. Quality of life, I love it. Definitely good. Moving on. This is a little controversial, but I think it's a good idea. Getting rid of the roll actions. Bloat. Some of those were stupid. Especially some of these other ones for like the magical range. Definitely makes sense. But tanks, yes. Don't take away my shirk. Don't take away my voke. Please. TP's going away too. Holy crap. When I first heard this, I was scared to death. I play. I want to play a Dark Knight again because when I saw the expansion was going to be a Dark Knight focused one, just like the last one was Monk, etc. I can't wait. I cannot wait to see how this works in game because now that I know that they're reworking the tanks more on that in a minute I am actually kind of okay with the idea that they got rid of TP and I guess I'll just have to see how Dark Knight plays with just MP now and I hope it's still an MP balancing act but they get they bring me back with the off global cooldowns like I think that they're going to do so but you know we don't talk about leaks or anything because those may not be true we never know but I don't want to say anything about them anyway um so this is another thing that's depressing I have a gigantic stack of strength materia. I'm just going to go gamble it. Useless. No more main attribute materia. That's good. At least they're adjusting the uh, the accessories to go for the, to make up for this. So th when I saw this page, I cried a little bit inside. I thought, P poor Titan Eggy. F Titan Eggy. Even the chat agreed. But you know what? Then they put a picture of Titan Eggy here. And I said, you know what? They wouldn't put a picture of him here unless something wasn't about to happen. And lo and behold, something happened. The next page, they told us that they'll be we'll be able to each they'll each have their own spell, and then similar to uh, how you, you use their finishing spells, it's all going to be on one button, and you're going to be able to switch between them pretty much on the fly. All of the pets are going to be viable. That's good. That's another good thing. Good on you. Good on you. Good on you. I'm really, really freaking proud of Square Enix. It's about time, because poor Titan Eggy has been in the back seat for too long. So let's just be honest here. They say that this uh, damage limit increase is uh, for future inflation, but to be honest, it's probably so that the Weebs can get their 1 million plus Medade Setsugekas. Everybody knows it. All right, so as a scholar main, when I decide to heal, this next change is fantastic. I'm glad that they're finally showing shields as a yellow mark on the bar. The only problem I have is, why is it on top of the bar? Why is it not just like directly laid over on the left side of the bar? Maybe they'll fix that. I don't know. Maybe we should all just say something about it on the forums. But either way, do it. This is Otherwise, this is an amazing idea. It's about time. Another a beautiful idea. Rebalancing player roles. Job Synergy, I am really glad that they're kind of getting rid of pally pal classes that are really exclusive to each other. It's fine to have that, but if it doesn't, if it's really only with one or two jobs rather than like maybe half of them, you know, if, if one job had like abilities that allowed it to buff half or like, you know, a huge portion of the, uh, the, the job list, the job pool, that makes sense. But like one-on-one -on -one certain things like that, like there's, there's just no... I'm, I'm glad they're doing this because it'll help break down this meta that people try to force down other people's throats that don't even really need the meta because they're not in the 1% trying to get that first kill. So to them, it really doesn't matter because in, in their eyes, everything can be cleared with anything. But I'm just kind of glad that they're going to change some things to try to make it a little bit more fair, even though in the eyes of some that could be negative. But to me, I think it's going to be a good thing. So tanks, this is where I'm excited because I'm a, I'm main tank. I love tanking. Tanking is my bread and butter. And you know what? I'm really excited that they're going to try to figure out a way to make it to where everything can be main tank or off tank. And I love how they say job effectiveness will depend vary depending on your skill. They need to just say that on the box. Just it just needs to be a, the, the the it just needs to be like the 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 slogan for the for Shadowbringers. Just that's the slogan. Job effectiveness will vary depending on player skill. Stay out of the party finder. Just kidding. Tank roll jobs. Oh yes, enmity generating combos are gone. 
I kind of hate those things. They felt kind of tedious. I'm just glad that we'll be able to focus on DPS, and that's it. No longer will I have to... And same with removing tank mastery, um, adding tank mastery and removing tank stances. It's exciting because I can just focus on doing damage or tanking with my tank stance on and just focus on doing damage. That's all I should be doing, and that's all I want to do as a tank. I don't really want to focus on making enmity unless I need to in an emergency situation. That's that's the only time I should be worrying about it. Uh, healer jobs. Healer rolls. Protection is removed. Protect is gone. Bye. Uh, it's It makes sense. I really wish they had never gotten rid of stone skin, but protect makes a little bit more sense to get rid of. It's kind of silly, but I can see why they're doing it. They are going to make all the different healers, I feel like a little bit more hopefully adjust, like still powerful at healing. That's, that's what they're trying to say, I think. They're going to be each more interesting. They say White Mage will receive an instant heal to mitigate the cast times of other abilities. Scholar pet actions are going to be revised, while direct heals and barrier magics are going to be adjusted. Hopefully, I think they're saying that we're getting more direct heals a little bit, but not too much, and still the barriers are still going to be hopefully useful. Otherwise, I'm going to be a little upset. I, th I don't really know for sure. I've seen some of the leaked stuff, but I'm going to just hold out that it's not exactly what I'm thinking, but hey, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Astrologian stances and card effects are going to be adjusted. Oh boy, I, I've seen a lot of stuff about that too, and that's kind of nerve-wracking, but... Who knows? We'll, we'll find out. Oh my, oh my. They didn't change too much about DPS overall, but some of them got really, really big changes. Like Machinist, Bard, and Summoner are getting complete, or not complete, but semi-pretty big re reworks. But the other ones are kind of pretty much unchanged, which is uh, interesting. I'm kind of glad that they've finally figured out some of these jobs. Dancer's going to have a dance partner. That's interesting. And uh, a game pad that I don't want to buy, even though I'm a lefty. Like, I don't even want to buy that crap. Please, like, then again, I guess it, it is pretty cool. If somebody wanted to buy me one, I would I would use it. But uh, I don't want to spend money on it. I'd rather have a regular keyboard. But, I mean, having both wouldn't be bad. Either. But, more importantly, this is what I'm really excited about. Viera and Hrothgar. The new races. I can't wait to be... A bunny. I'm ready. I'm ready. Job action trailer was amazing. I am a little bit nervous about this expansion, to be honest. There are some changes that are a little bit nerve-wracking and make me very, very scared for the future of the game. But overall, some of these changes seem really good, and I'm actually kind of excited. I'm a little bit more excited for this expansion than I've been excited for anything in quite a while. Even more than the last two expansions. Definitely more than Heaven's Word. And looking back now, you never know. Actually, I could look back later. That's probably why I'm doing this video, because I want to have another moment in time to, in my life to look back at and go, look at this sweet little summer child. He has no idea what amazing things are coming and how awesome Shadowbringers is going to be in the next two years of his life. Or, you know, that's just hopeful, wishful thinking there, but, or it could just be, Look at the terrible, terrible things that have changed. And look at this guy right here living it up and doesn't even know that he's living in the golden age and he's just waiting for the fall. But I guess we'll have to see. Okay.